Hi, this is C123 posting a tutorial on redirecting with PHP. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to redirect with PHP and how to redirect with client side scripting. So, to redirect with PHP, there's a function called the header function, and uh, to use the first a uh, you have to specify the parameter location, then the two dots, and space. Then you simply put in your page location. So as you can see here, there's location with a capital L, and uh, your two dots, space, and your page. Now, uh, note with the header function, uh, you cannot put any browser output before it uh, because uh, if you put any browser output before it then it will cause some errors for PHP and uh, I'll show you that soon so let's first test this PHP version it redirects you to he okay however say we put some browser output before it and go back it says cannot modify header information because the header is already sent the header is uh, sent when you first uh, present some HTML output to the browser and by presenting some HTML output we simply did this uh, white space right here. HTML output can include uh, simply echoing uh, some HTML code or echoing some text or uh, to print some text or to print uh, HTML or to print R an arrow or to var dump say an arrow or to even print uh, a variable All of these will simply uh, cause an error for the header function. And so, oh, and in case you're wondering, even that will cause an error for the header function. And so those are some decent examples for what can cause an error for the header function. This here in particular the ASDF column, that's a E notice error for undefined constant. Uh that'll because it outputs an E notice error, uh, the E notice error will then uh, generate an error for the header because the E notice will output to the browser, thereby the output to the browser will generate an error for the header. I'll show you that. Oh, and now page. Where do we? Now 
we go. So undefined constant ASDF and because this here was the output to the browser which you can see it caused this error here and uh, yeah that's the basics to the header function so to get rid of this error here simply solve this error here and it will automatically get rid of that error there so if we delete that there and voila it works now next is uh, to do client side redirecting client side redirecting allows you to uh, do some output to the browser before redirecting however client side redirecting can be disabled by the user so an example of this is uh, let's try that and it's still redirected let's just go back to the page first there's the output and it still redirects and uh, the way that client side redirecting works is uh, there's a meta redirect so you have a meta tag to refresh the page but when it refreshes it refreshes to a different location and also you have a javascript script and uh, you have in it window.location the window object is like the object for the entire window and location is uh, well obviously add the location or the path it, that the tab is set to and you set where it uh, should go to and uh, the new location is the page that you wish and it will redirect the user to there if the first one fails. So if for example it have meta redirect disabled then you can use javascript and if javascript is disabled then you can use meta redirect. And uh, a lot of users these days have JavaScript disabled, and it's only modern browsers that don't have. Uh, it's only modern browsers that have modern. Uh, tongue twister. It's only modern browsers that have meta redirect disabled and so uh, it's less likely that meta redirect would be disabled in comparison to javascript so they're the basics uh, so in comparing client side redirecting to the header function it's better to use the header function when you can because uh, the header function cannot be disabled and uh, you're guaranteeing the user can be redirected when using the header function but I only use client side redirecting as a last resort and also if you're doing a processing page where you do a lot of processing and then redirect the user 
What you may want to look into is the popen function. This allows you to open a processor and uh, redirect the user immediately. So you could open in the background another PHP page and that will run like a cron job, C-R-O-N. And uh, yeah, basically it would be popen. And depending on your operating system, you'd have a uh, However, before the PHP, you can specify an option for it to run in the background depending on your operating system. And uh, on Windows it would be different, right? Eh? And uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head what the option is, but it varies from operating system, Windows and Linux. Uh, and uh, it allows it to run like a uh, task scheduler or a cron job uh, or as it may be called crone job but uh, yeah that way it won't hold your page for say half an hour and the user won't have to wait all that time then you'd have to redirect immediately after it and uh user will experience uh instantaneous movement instead of having to wait for the processing so that's just a little tip that i've uh, got for those who are doing mass processing with the header redirect so uh yeah hope you have a nice time and uh hope you enjoyed this tutorial and so keep tuned for more tutorials.